So if it isn't obvious enough, this video is all about the Sigma 14-24 f2.8 DG DN art lens for Sony E-mount. And I've got to start this one off with a little bit of a disclaimer. I don't actually have a copy of this lens anymore. Something horrible, terrible, no good, very bad happened to my copy, which I'll get to later on in the video. But just to give you the caveat, there won't be too many shots that show what the lens actually looks like because I only filmed a few before this bad thing happened. So let's start with the shallow stuff, the aesthetics, and the build quality. And here it stands out. Just like all Sigmar lenses, it's made of an all metal housing with a built-in plastic lens hood on this one. It's got the rubberized focus ring, rubberized zoom ring, the custom function button. It has autofocus manual focus hold. Uh, it's really well built and I think it looks good and it looks solid, right? The one caveat or the one thing I really don't like is the beer gut. This thing's got a beer gut, the front element protrudes and this is a problem when it comes to adding any sort of ND filters, adding a polarizing filter, it's kind of a pain. It does have a rear holder for putting in smaller little gels basically between the sensor and the rear element of the lens, which we'll get to later on. Aside from the pot belly, I don't have too many problems with the physical look of this lens. I think it's great. The ergonomics are great. It's well balanced. It's under two pounds, which is pretty remarkable considering what the 14 to 24s look like on DSLRs. But more importantly, how does it actually look? What's the image quality out of this lens? The first thing that I definitely notice is the color rendition. Again, Sigma art lenses have a very contrasty, sharp, good quality color rendition. I love it. Personally, I'm a huge fan. I think this lens stands out. I notice with such a wide lens at 2.82, the chromatic aberration is almost non-existent, which is quite impressive. And likewise, it does very well in backlit conditions. If you're shooting into the sun, which I often do if I'm shooting with something this wide, it's gonna look good. There's gonna be the contrast in the subject that you're trying to capture. Speaking of backlighting, I also like the flare on this lens. You can see it and you can make a flare definitely appear. You can see some of the inner elements in certain circumstances, but for the most part, it does an excellent job. Know that the lens hood is built in, so all the flares I'm seeing are the ones that exist that are harder to manage. Uh, I'd have to block off with a hand or something. Most of the photos I took with this were on the 42 megapixel Sony a7R 3 So I was putting this lens to the test and I have to say it performed very well. The resolution is there. It's a very sharp, ultra wide lens and very high contrast. I really do like the image that comes out of it. The one thing that I will say is when I was shooting wide open at 2.8 in particular, I noticed that some of the edges where the most distortions happening on this lens were a little bit blurry. Not too big of an issue because this is something that I almost expect in an ultra wide lens, but something to let you know, it's still not perfect there. Uh, I think this is an astounding, resolute, sharp lens for most landscape situations, but you have to know what kind of limitations you might have. Another note, I've used this in Lightroom and it seems that the Lightroom profiles for this aren't exactly perfect. Lightroom seems to overestimate how much vignetting needs to be removed and the distortion seems a little bit off. Not too big of an issue because I can tweak things to make it look how I want, but I did note that it's not a perfect gradient when it comes to fixing that vignetting. What else? Autofocus. No complaints there. I think this is perfectly suitable, very fast. I had no issues. With an ultra wide lens, I typically don't care how fast the autofocus is, as long as it's responsive and seems to work and doesn't make much noise. And to that end, the Sigma does an excellent job. So because of this pot belly that this lens has, it can accept filters on the front, right? So we have this rear uh, filter slot for things like gels and such. I found this to be workable. I used it particularly for trying to do some video stuff and I would have used it for landscape stuff as well. Uh, my big problem though is the gels are kind of finicky to work with. It's hard not to get your finger on any part of the actual uh, gel lens and smudge it right before you put it into the camera. And likewise, I don't love to open up my sensor and expose my sensor to put an ND filter in. I found while doing video and having to change my uh, ND strength often, this was a bit of a pain. 
Also, the pop belly means that it has a different lens hood. It's got this slide on cover, which to be frank, I found very, very easy to use. I almost prefer it over the clip on lens caps because I'm, I'm not hitting the front of the element. Uh, when trying to put the lens cap on, it's just easy to use. The problem is it scratches the exterior plastic on the built-in lens hood. So just using the lens cap puts cosmetic damage on the outside of your lens. Again, it's cosmetic, it's not gonna cause any issues, but it's a real bummer. Lastly, there's the obvious comparison between this lens and the Sony 12 to 24 millimeter F2.8 G Master, which was recently announced. Now, the G Master is two millimeters wider, and on an ultra wide lens, that makes a big difference. It's noticeably wider. It's going to have a bigger, broader, ultra wide type of effect, but it's also $3,000. Look, if you've got some gazebo money laying around, then maybe pick up the Sony. Otherwise, get the Sigma. It's a really good deal. You're gonna love the lens. Okay, I've been holding back. So why don't I have a copy of the lens to show you? Well, let me show you something. Do you know where this is? This is a fairly remote location in the North Cascades National Park. It's about an hour and a half away from any sort of civilization, hour and a half away from cell service, a dead end road that we drove to and camped at. I was camping here with my fiance and over the course of the night, over a heavy rain, we left some of the camera gear in the car. But overnight, someone commuted in and broke into our car. and they stole everything. And included in it, of course, was my 14 to 24 millimeter lens. So unfortunately, I don't have a copy to be able to show you and demo some of the things that I liked and don't like about the lens. Okay, on to happier things, back to the video. What's the verdict? Well, in my case, the question is, should I buy this lens again? Is this something I wanna pick up again? And my short answer is no. And here's why. I wanted this lens to be perfect for astrophotography and likewise for video. I wanted a cheaper, reasonable ultra wide that I could use for video and astrophotography. So this lens wasn't quite fast enough. I wanted a little bit faster of an aperture, particularly for the astrophotography. And then the second point was the changing of the ND filters. I wish I had something that I could put a variable ND filter on the front of and be able to adjust my light that way rather than having to open up and expose the sensor just to be able to put an ND filter in. Now, the only reason I'm holding back is because there's rumor that a fast ultra wide prime might be released soon. If it is and it can accept the front filter thread, I may go for it depending on cost. But if they don't, I really miss and I loved this lens, so I may come back and pick one up. I hope this video helps you to figure out whether or not this is a lens that you should get. Uh, thanks for watching.